When you're starting out in cybersecurity, specifically in pen testing and ethical hacking, one of the more confusing things can be the different types of tests that you might perform. This is a, specifically talking about white box, black box, and gray box testing. In this clip, I'm gonna see if I can remove some of that mystery. If you like this video, please remember to hit that subscribe button. Now that that's out of the way, let's get into these different types of penetration tests. First one on the chopping block is going to be the white box test. Now, this is a really interesting test because what it does is it's got a lot of really interesting things going on with it. Specifically though, is the idea that you will have full knowledge of the network, the systems, the code behind the network that you are attempting to test on. So your clients are gonna give you full access, full purview, and this is gonna give you a lot of really cool stuff because you have full reign. So uh, a white box test is a, a full look into the network systems and application code of your client's system. So uh, a couple of pros and cons that go along with this. First, the pros are it's very comprehensive, right? You have the ability to find any and all bugs that you have the skill to find. So there's nothing limiting you on what you can and can't not find. It's a really good way to go. Obviously your technical expertise is going to play a part into that. But if you have the wherewithal, that's gonna be great. You can find as many bugs as possible, and that's the probably the biggest pro when it comes to a white box test. That's not the only pro. We also have the idea that it is preventative in nature, depending on when you get involved as a tester. If they are in development phase of rolling out a new network infrastructure or new systems or a new application, and you are white box testing those things as they are rolled out or even before they are rolled out, well, then you can say, hey, that could be a security risk and actually kill bugs before they get started. So that's a really great thing. We like that. Avoid those bugs from being pushed to production at all and we're so much the better. Now, there are a couple of cons to this, and uh, I say a couple. It's one specifically that I think of, and that is the idea that you could easily overlook something simple uh, and, and there would still be a bug because it is usually very technical in nature. It's easy to overlook those very uh, low level, unskilled things that somebody might use to gain access in the system. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at doing white box testing. All right, let's take a look at that black box test now, see what that's all about. With a black box test, you're going in with the idea that's basically the opposite of a white box test, which means that you're gonna have no knowledge of things like the network or the technologies being used and surely not any kind of given code, at least I hope not, right? So the organization is not gonna give you that stuff. Now, the neat thing about this though, even though that does sound kind of scary, right? I got, I've got no knowledge, I have to find my way in, but that does emulate a real world threat, a real world type of attack. So you do give that, that would definitely fall under our pros category when it comes to a black box test. Another really interesting thing is that this is usually done by independent teams. It's, uh, not that there aren't teams like red teams and things of that nature that are a part of an organization, but a lot of times with this type of test, you're gonna outsource that to a third party. It's gonna cut through any kind of bias and they're not gonna have any even perceived understanding of what it's like inside because they don't work for that company. So a lot of times that's the way this goes. Now a couple other pros is that it's super fast. When I say that, what it means is I don't have to take my time looking at code, trying to do a code analysis, things of that nature. Not really worried about that so much as I am trying to just, what's the quickest way into this system? Look for the easiest way, look for a logic flaw in something that I can easily reach and touch and find my way in. So it can make this a really fast type of assessment, right? You just start hacking at the thing. It's also kind of simplistic, right? Again, not worried about that code. My technical expertise might not have to be on par with a full developer type of knowledge base. So I can just know about how web app hacking works or uh, system hacking, network hacking, and I can get it. Not that those aren't difficult skills, don't get me wrong, but we don't go as deep as you would if you had to understand code, right? So there's that. So we just have to test the system and look for bugs that would allow us some access. Now, cons of this is it's not gonna be as comprehensive as that white box test. Some bugs are gonna get missed. Not that you won't miss bugs in a white box test, but you have more time, you have uh, more insight into the system than you would with this black box style of, of examination. So therefore, just by nature, you're gonna miss a few things. Well, that leaves us with just one type of test less for today anyway, which is the gray box test. And as you've probably surmised, this is 
a kind of a, a conglomeration of the two different types of tests, a joining, a synergy, if you will, of the white box test and the black box test. So what does this really mean? It just means that you're trying to get the best of both worlds. So with a gray box test, I'm gonna get some knowledge as a tester to the internal workings of the system. I'm not gonna get everything, but uh, uh, and with that said, that means I also have some sort of dark areas that I am not gonna understand, I'm gonna have to kind of figure out. And it's kind of a neat, where, uh, a neat thing where with that black box assessment portion of it, I do continue to work as, as a, a real true threat might work. So I, I still kind of give you a look of what it would be like for a real threat to attack your organization. And then with a white box test, I kind of get to go farther than that and even emulate maybe even what an APT or an advanced persistent threat would do. Someone who can get inside access or an insider threat even and have some sort of level of trust or inside capabilities to look into the systems. You might not have everything, but you got a little bit of something. So you get kind of the best of both worlds with these gray box tests. Let's go into the pros and cons of this. The pros are gonna be, I'm a, well, a gray box is really a jack of all trades, right? You're gonna get a lot of um, information out of, and from both sides of the fence. So we get, you know, real APT and normal threat emulation, right? The cons are gonna be that while I am a jack of all trades, I'm gonna be a master of probably none of these things. So I'm gonna be slower than a black box and I'm not gonna be as comprehensive as a white box test. So that's just some of the pros and cons you'll find with a gray box assessment. Well, there you have it. You've looked at the white box, the black box, and the gray box tests that uh, pen testers might engage in. And hopefully that helps you out understand those things a little bit better. If you like what you saw, I appreciate you hitting that subscribe button. And thanks for watching. I've been Daniel Lowry with IT Pro TV, and we'll see you next time.